So, yeah, for the vast majority of history, nobody could see it. But then finally, just within this small blip of time that humans have been alive, do we know what's on the far side of the moon? Spoiler alert, more moon. Hello everyone and welcome back to Astrophysicist Plays Outer Wilds. It's been a bit since my last recording, but as I recall, we finished up pretty much everything we can do on every planet except for Dark Bramble, and also haven't checked out the Interloper. We also discovered two completely different ways to break reality. So, I was thinking a bit about how to go to, for a third, and you have to use time travel to break reality, and basically, you have to do something to make previous time travel impossible. So, as I see it, theoretically, something as simple as taking out the power cell to the Ash Twin Project and then dying might be enough to cause a paradox, because then our memories wouldn't go back. But then, thinking a bit further... Our memories going back are different every time, and that doesn't cause a paradox, so maybe memories are exempt from this rule. So, I'll have to think a bit more about that, see if we can come up with any other ideas. For now, let's catch up on the ship's log. So, Ocean Depths, there's a new update here. Uh, oh, probably from when I tried to get below. The ocean is surprisingly calm beneath the current. Some sort of electrical field surrounds the planet's core. Okay. And there was something down here. Subsurface energy readings. Oh, this is on the interloper. Okay, the Nomai landed on the interloper not long after its arrival in the solar system. The shuttle's equipment heard strange energy readings coming from somewhere beneath the surface. Clary, the Nomai who stayed behind, lost contact with the other two after they descended below the interloper's surface. Another thing we found out was going into the Ash Twin Project, there was a pretty clear timeline of everything that happened. So basically, at the end of it, they finished building the Ash Twin Project, but then discovered they couldn't blow up the sun, which was necessary to power it. And then they got distracted by the new comet, that is, the interloper, coming into the solar system. And that was the last message from the Nomai. So whatever happened to kill them came right after that, so perhaps going to the interloper will help us solve the mystery of what killed all the Nomai. Okay, anglerfish fossil. Um, Nomai children used to play a game here. One player was the anglerfish and wore a blindfold. The rest of the children, the little fish, lined up against one wall. When the anglerfish said go, the little fish had to sneak across the other side. The blindfold rule was added because real anglerfish are blind. Okay, so that's giving us a clue about how to avoid the real one. Uh, the adult Nomai were delighted to see the children incorporate their research into the game's rules. The Sunless City. A Nomai city built into the walls of a huge underground cavern. The city is divided vertically into four districts. The Nomai debated building a sun station in order to power the Ash Twin project. Several Nomai opposed its construction, arguing that failure could result in the destruction of the solar system. The Nomai traveled to this solar system in pursuit of a signal from something older than the universe itself. They named the source of this signal the Eye of the Universe. Alright. The Ash Twin Project. A hollowed out chamber inside Ash Twin. The energy cables from the surface are plugged into a protective casing at the center of the planet. There are eight monoliths with Nomai masks attached. Three of the masks are actively receiving data from the probe tracking module, Giant's Deep, and Timber Hearth, respectively. The Ash Twin Project was designed to use the energy from a supernova triggered by the Sun Station to send probe data from the orbital probe cannon 22 minutes into the past. The Sun Station did not work. Although the Ash Twin Project was theoretically sound, the Nomai were unable to power it. There's more to explore here. So, the one thing we didn't do in the Ash Twin Project was trying to remove the core, which would prevent our memories from going back in time and might break reality. It's an option if we want to try it, but obviously our memories won't be going back and we'll just have to load a previous save if we do that. Um, Ash Twin Tower Designs. Designs for each of the towers on Ash Twin's equator. Each tower works to a different planet, 
although many know my were quick to note that the sun is not actually a planet. Uh, good old comment section. Each tower was designed to visually reflect its warp destination. The towers allowed the Nomai to quickly travel between Ash Twin and all other locations crucial to the Ash Twin project. Yeah, so we found out the Ash Twin project is built into the core of Ash Twin, which is why they put the teleporters all around it so they could get materials to and from it quickly. Um, high Energy Lab. The Nomai successfully reproduced the temporal anomaly first observed at the White Hole Station. Warped objects appear to arrive before they depart. The Nomai discovered they could increase the negative time interval between arrival and departure by adding energy to the warp cores. The Nomai wanted to know if a 22-minute negative time interval was possible. They concluded it would require new technology to produce the necessary energy, as well as an advanced warp core to handle these energies. Ash Twin was proposed as a location for the project. Okay, we've done everything on the Quantum Moon. That led us to Solanum, who kept hinting us very strongly, hey, what happens if a, uh, an observer, a conscious observer, enters the eye of the universe? So that's something on our to-do list, but we don't know how to get there yet. In order to find it, we need to get to the probe tracking module, uh, wherever that is. I think that's over in Giants Deep. Yeah, but to get there, that's fallen into uh, underwater, underneath the purple electricity on Giants Deep, which we don't know how to get through. Oh, Bremple Island points to it. An island of thorny vines and what appears to be a frozen jellyfish. It looks like Feldspar camped here before heading off to Dark Bramble. So there's a link between Bramble Island and the ocean depths. So I guess that's hinting to us. If you want to know how to get into the ocean depths, go find Feldspar. Okay. So, two leads right now. There's find Feldspar on Dark Bramble and check out the interloper. So I think the interloper is a small comet versus dark bramble, big planet. So let's check off the small comet first. Oh, and let's see, can we add it to, can we lock onto it from here? Yeah, that's a quantum moon um, interloper. Can we lock onto it? Yeah. Okay, maybe we'll have to go to the map. Yeah. Okay, so where is it? There we go. And autopilot to it. Right through the sun. Oh, no, 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 you don't. I've made that mistake before. So I'm going around the sun. Not through the sun. No, it's not as good an idea as you think it is. You want to go around the sun. Okay, there we go. Now we engage autopilot. Okay. And the other clue we had about the interloper is that you have to go through fissures on the side toward the sun. So that side warms up and you can get in there. So, little physics note, if you look at the interloper, which direction does the tail of a comet point in reality that is? And the answer is away from the sun because particles get blown off of it and away from the sun. Now here you can kind of see that streak, but the main tail seems to just be behind the interloper here, which isn't really how that works in reality. Although maybe you do get a bit of a degree tail behind it. So let's just look over this. So you can definitely see two sides to it. The front side and back side do look quite different, even though it's not the sun side, which is kind of interesting. Ooh, there's something down there. Yeah, so I'm going to want to land, check this out on foot. Now, it's going to have very low mass, so we'll have to be careful. I mean, even jumping might get us out of its gravity. Ooh. That's not stable. Good thing we can time travel. So gravity, zero. Yeah, that's about right. 
Oh, yeah. See, I didn't even jump. I just walked off a ledge and I was floating. Okay. So, this is the spiky side. It looked like there was something here. Yeah, I basically have to use my downward rocket to keep from floating away. Okay, so maybe this is the Nomai shuttle here. Got kind of stuck in the ice? That's weird. Okay, Clary. This is so troublesome. It seems the comet wishes to submerge our shuttle in ice. If we stay on the surface too long, the shuttle may freeze entirely. Poke. Even if it did, couldn't someone call it back home to the gravity cannon on Ember Twin? Which I did, yeah, got inside that way. Hi, yes, but the exploration of the comet would be more difficult if we were without the shuttle until someone recalled it. Perhaps we shouldn't have landed on the dark side of the comet. Suppose one of us remained in the shuttle to keep it warm and continue monitoring the surface. Hi, that would be wise, I think. Clary, if you don't mind waiting here with it, Poke and I can continue to investigate the surface. So I'm basically saying, if you want to find out what's inside, go to Ember Twin. But we already did that. You know, one other astrophysics note, they talk about the dark side here. Um, people talk about the dark side of the moon in reality. And it's kind of a misleading term because the moon doesn't have a single side that is darker than the other in a literal sense as the moon um, orbits the Earth. Uh, different parts of it are exposed to the sun at different points in its orbit. So all of it gets lit up at some point, although its day is one or it's yeah, its day is one month long as seen from Earth. H however, what they do mean by dark side is the far side of the moon, which we can never see from Earth. Since the moon is uh, what you call tidally locked to the Earth, that is, um, its orbital period is exactly the same as its rotational period. The same side of the moon always faces Earth, and so from Earth we can never see the other side of it. So the far side is called the dark side because it's dark to our knowledge of it. It's the unknown to us. Or at least it was up until the advent of the space program uh, half a century ago, or so. I think it was the 60s-ish where we were finally able to see what was on the far side of the moon. So yeah, for the vast majority of history, nobody could see it. But then finally, just within this small blip of time that humans have been alive, do we know what's on the far side of the moon? Spoiler alert, more moon. Okay, yeah, so I definitely can't get in there. Okay. So, what I want to do now is to go to... Hmm. Well, the other side... Yeah, see, this is me not touching the control stick. Yeah, I'm just sliding. I'm not sure if it's icy or the gravity is so low I'm just falling off. But anyways, I want to go to the sunward side and look for fissures. Oh, yep, this is very sunward. Let's see if we can find a fissure. Oh, there, there's a fissure. I'm getting sucked into the sun, this. Okay, I might have to take another attempt at this. Oh, I'm not sure if the fissure is still open. Oh, okay. Oh. Wait, something here? Or no. Okay, I'm low health, but I don't exactly want to get out of here. I think I'm just going to wait until it gets back to the sun, so I'll skip ahead for you all. Okay, I'm just noticing a couple things here. First of all, as I stand here and look up, I'm always seeing the sun wherever the interloper goes, so it seems to be tidally locked to same side facing the sun second thing which you can see particularly if you look at the map it has two tails and i seem to recall actually hearing something like that in reality that comets do have two tails let me look that up while i'm waiting and see if i can figure out what what's actually going on there because this could actually be correct 
Okay, yeah, I was right. Comets do have two tails. One's a plasma tail made of ionized gas and a dust tail made of small solid particles. They both point away from the sun, though it could be... What's that? Is that the... Oh, that must be the white hole station. Okay. Oh, I didn't know the interloper came out here. Yeah, but I am running low on oxygen. I might have to go back in. I wonder why the tails point in different directions. I'm going to have to look that up and get back to you on that. Or I'll leave it to, for you as homework. Yes, we're assigning homework again. Okay, figured out why the tails go in different directions. So, one tail is ionized particles. That always points pretty much directly away from the sun. And that's the kind of halo we see, the long dark blue streak. Uh, the other tail is the dust tail, and that one points kind of intermediate between directly away from the sun and the path the comet came from. Uh, that lags behind because the dust particles are heavy and aren't moving as quickly, so you see some effects of the comet's own velocity on them. All right, let's get back to the game and hope the interloper opens up soon and we still have enough time left in the cycle to do whatever we're going to do inside it. it. It's so small I can't imagine there's much, but we'll see. Oh, I can hear it opening. In we go. All right, we are inside the comet. And I see a cave down. Let's see what we find. Ooh, ghost matter crystals. So, oh, wrong button. So, scout launcher, photo mode. Okay, do not want to go off down there. No, this footing's a bit more solid here. Ooh, more ghost matter. Hmm. Oh, what's this? Trees. Must have been left by the gnome I who came here. Oh, recording. Hi. I'm receiving much stronger energy readings now that we're beneath the crust. Whatever it is must lie somewhere below, closer to the comet center. Stronger energy readings. You know, I commented before that the gnome I don't seem to talk about ghost matter at all, despite it being everywhere. So, I, it occurred to me there are two possibilities. One, the Nomai are immune to it and just don't notice it or bother talking about it, which, I don't know, seems a bit unlikely. Or two, it came after them, and so it wasn't around when they were there. But they're talking about stronger energy readings now, and I'm seeing a lot of ghost matter around, which implies the latter might be true, that this is their first introduction to ghost matter, if, if that is the energy readings they're talking about. Anyways, let's read on. Whatever it is must lie somewhere below, closer to the comet center, and I'm starting to think it's more dangerous than we realized. Pi, Clary, can you hear us? Clary, yes, but your voices are faint. I fear we will lose communication entirely if you continue any deeper. Poke, keep the shuttle warm for us, Clary. We'll return the moment we identify the source of the energy readings. Clary, I understand, but be cautious, both of you. Okay, we've got four paths here. And, well, we have to be very careful. Oh. And I'm dead to ghost matter, despite the fact that I was trying not to go in there. Oh, okay. We're going to have to start again, and note to self, do not go down the rightmost tunnel. All right, I'll meet everybody back inside the interloper. Okay, I'm back again, and I have realized two things. It seems to be the icy floor specifically that's slippery. And two, I can launch a scout to, to look down and see which of these tunnels is safe or not. And it seems the scout 
slips on the ice. Okay, this one looks safe. Yes, this is the safe tunnel. Well, there might be more than one, but I'm guessing it's just this one. Okay, we are through. No signs of ghost matter. Oh, signs of ghost matter detected. Okay. So, yeah, definitely don't want to go through there. So where else can I go, is the question. Huh. Okay. Flashlight on, that might help. So I think I came out through there, and do not want to go down there because of ghost matter. Now, ooh, is there something up? Yes, maybe I can go somewhere here. Okay, more ice, so let's launch a scout. Okay, don't want to go left. Ooh. So it's like the center there's one. Ooh, that's complicated. Okay, let's... So first there's one to the left. So I want to go right first, then left. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a bit tricky. Let's try the best. Hopefully that's the last turn. Okay. Yeah. I want to go photo mode. Is that safe? Okay, that is safe. Okay. Oh, found someone. So, they died while investigating the interloper. Hmm. Okay. And can we get through here? Yes, looks like we can. Ooh. Whoa, that is cool. What is this? It's like some big crystal. Is that like those... Is that related to the ghost matter crystals? Because they're around here, too. Huh. That, oh, that looks really cool. Okay, and the other Nomai, either Pi or Poke here, presumably. Oh. There we go, Velocity Match. Poke, okay. Hi, Poke. Sorry we had to meet like this. Poke, the spherical stone casing. Doesn't look spherical to me, so that must have changed. Spherical stone casing here seems to be the source of the energy readings. No, rather, the source is what's within the stone. I'm detecting some form of ex exotic matter. So, the crystal casing contained the ghost matter... And it must have burst after Poke saw it. And when it burst, the crystals tended to go to the same place as the ghost matter did. They traveled together because they had the same source. But the crystals themselves aren't the ghost matter. They just are a good indicator of where it's likely to be. Because they came the same place, they tended to go the same place. Okay. Pi. The stone is muting our energy readings. They should be ten times what we're seeing, at least. Poke. Pi. I don't think we want this matter interacting with us. As far as I can tell, direct contact with it would almost certainly be fatal. Pi. I've never encountered anything like this casing, but it's all that's protecting us from what's inside. Oh, so maybe the crystals resist ghost matter? Huh. Worse still, this matter is disturbingly volatile. Poke. Pi. Whatever the matter inside this stone casing is, it's more than just profoundly unstable. It's under tons of pressure. Look at this density scan. I've never seen anything this tightly compacted before. What is this? Pi. This is orders of magnitude worse than I'd imagined. If this stone were to rupture, the lethal matter within would rapidly expand, completely blanketing 
Ah, uh, it did rupture. Well, I think we know what killed all the Nomai then. Completely blanketing the star system almost instantaneously. And the pressure is still building. Oh, sorry. Forgot the right key to go down. There we go. And this pressure is still building as the comet approaches the star system. Hi. Return to our return to the shuttle right now. It looks like they didn't make it. The rest of our friends need to know they're in terrible danger. Leave your equipment and run. Poke, what are you doing, Pi? Pi, the more we know about this alien matter, the better our chances of survival. I will learn what I can here. Go, warn the others. Maybe they can construct shelter somehow. Now, Poke. So this is Pi desperately gathering information in hopes it might be helpful. And Poke was just outside and had barely gotten outside this chamber before it ruptured and presumably spread ghost matter all throughout the solar system. And that was what killed all all with an asterisk, that asterisk being one-sixth of Solanum, all of the Nomai. And over time, the ghost matter faded away, it dissipated until it was mostly safe for us to travel. And I guess for some reason the Harthians weren't killed by it. So these crystals were able to resist the ghost matter, so maybe something else on Timber Hearth protected us, but there weren't any Nomai there. They decided to leave us alone, and because of that, whatever was protecting us there didn't save any of the Nomai. Only Solanum, who had one-sixth of herself on the quantum moon, was far enough out to survive. Survive-ish. Uh, I suspect that's all to say here. But let's just look around at all these holes, and just in case there's anywhere else to go. Even though I, I kind of doubt it. That itself is the biggest dramatic reveal. Yeah, all the big holes I'm seeing. Okay, that's the crack I came in through. And all the other holes seem to be filled with ghost matter still. Oh. Oh, there are two cracks. I don't know which I came in. Let's go through this one. See if there's anything here. Yeah, this- okay. Th I poke. This is the one I came in through. So there was another crack, I think, which didn't have ghost matter. Unless I just saw the same crack twice. Which is possible. Yeah, I think I just saw the same crack twice. Okay, so that's everything to see here. And as a tribute to the gnome, I, I will now ritually impale myself on the same thing that killed them. Well, thank you very much everyone for watching, and let's say a fond farewell to the Nomai, now that we understand what led them to their deaths. Despite how curious and sun explodey they were, it was surprisingly not trying to blow up the sun that killed them all. It was something they couldn't see coming in time to deflect. Kind of like on Earth, we're at risk of a comet coming in and wiping out Earth before we can do anything about it. Sometimes the universe just decides that's it for you. Yeah. Well, in our case, we can maybe try to fight it with a comet. We should probably flow focus on global warming a bit first. That's the more pressing threat. Then we can worry about comets. Well, kind of a downer ending, but I think that's the place to leave it today. So, thank you everyone for watching. I will see you again next week. Bye bye Thank you very much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and click the bell to be sure you get notifications of new uploads. See you again soon!